What does good look like? Well, this is a question that's been keeping me awake at night lately and keeping me awake not out of being worried awake, but being excited about an idea. Because I reckon, I think it's one of the most fundamental, most important questions that uh, faces us all as humanity right now. What does good look like? So people talk about that in ethics, a greater good, a common good. People talk about it in behaviours with children, like we're hardwired to have a lot of emotional interest in what being good looks like in childhood. We get praised for it, we get rewards for it, we get driven by it, we get constrained by it to conform, to fit in, that being good means not rocking the boat, that being a good boy, I remember as a child, sometimes meant just sitting there quietly doing as I was told and not actually being out there in the world, active and self-expressed. So what does good look like is such a fundamental question. It's a question in our relationships with each other, our life partners, our work colleagues, our families, our communities, our politics, everything, absolutely everything boils down to the question of what good looks like. You know, what does good look like in terms of good enough and being perfectionist of never getting to a goal because it's never going to be good enough? What does good look like in terms of that other person's version of what good is? I've seen it over and over again with organisations, businesses, governments, stakeholders, Māori tribes in New Zealand, all sorts of people grappling with this question of what good looks like. What's the outcome? When will we have reached it? Will that be good enough? These are such fundamental questions. And what I'm interested in with it more than anything is we've got to delve into them a bit more deeply rather than brushing over the surface because, in fact, once we come to a common place about what good looks like, based on our values and the things that we really care about in the world, then we can really progress. We can progress as individuals, we can progress as groups, as communities, as businesses, as governments, as humanity, ultimately. Because let's, let's face it, isn't that what we're looking at globally, but also in a small way, in a day-to-day -day way, when we do simple tasks? And that's why I use The Weave and wrote the book The Weave and now run workshops and mentoring programs. It's all about that. It's about what does good look like? What are the common grounds that we all hold that we care about in terms of family, in terms of love and well-being and freedom and these deeper values? When we start to talk about that, we see how much we have in common. And then, of course, we are all different and unique. So there's this incredible balancing act in our lives between being unique, being an individual, and fitting with a group and finding common aims, a social connection with others, because that, in fact, lights us up and makes us live and fulfilled. So the weave is all about that. It's about the practical matters of textiles and the things that we have in our daily lives. It's the bigger picture intangible thinking of stories and vision. And when we bring that all together in our difference, we can create unity.